So for clearing out a tier 4 dungeon, we got this really fast two-handed sword that we already had. We're going to give it over to one of our ranged fighters, Eleanor. I think it's generally good to give them like two arrows or two cartridges, plus a ranged weapon, plus a two-hander, at least for like the longer drawn out fights, like if you're sieging. Also as an add-on bonus for tier 4, we get four attribute points, which we're just going to match into strength. And four skill points, we're going to put one more in iron flesh, two more in power strike, and then one in athletics, so we're faster in dungeons. As a final reward, we got 40k gold, which is pretty close to being able to afford the really good chest piece. The reason why we're kind of low on gold is we bought this book of healing plus one wound treatment while in inventory plus one surgery while in inventory and plus one trainer while in inventory these three books were like 20k but i'd only seen the book vendor once on this playthrough so i decided i had to buy them and this final book was given to us as a gift by augie boggy which i think is completely worthless but we're gonna read it anyways we're at 69k and from what i remember the chest piece was around 80k so on the way home we're gonna raid caravans and every time we raid them we get 2k which is based on our party strength in the last episode we were getting like 2700 but we ended up losing some units. We also need to free up our inventory space and I have a bunch of random stuff that I was kind of holding on to but I'm going to sell a lot of these guns. I don't think giving guns to lower tier companions is actually a good idea. I'm just going to give a sword and shield to our lower tier companions that don't really have that high of skill and there's going to be kind of a meat wall. So with that transaction we're up to 78k. The chest piece that we're looking for is 88k so we need 10k more which is like a village raid. Also I just had a pretty major revelation thanks to the comment section. If you go to camp, diplomacy preferences, and disable NPC complaints, your companion companions will all be 99 morale enthusiastic and I'm kind of on the fence about this one because in the last episode a big part of it was Gotrek was steadily getting sadder and sadder due to I don't really know what. He was unhappy about my style of leadership and unhappy about the general state of affairs or like downright appalled but the reason why I think it's okay to use this option is because he was not complaining for a long time like the last time we had raided any villages was like 40 or 50 days ago. We also have no companions that he disagrees with and we actually have a companion that he likes Felix so for that reason it seems like you should be happy or at least he should be speaking up about what we're doing wrong. Well with all that out of the way we can now resume raiding villages. Do keep in mind every time we raid a village we do lose reputation which is like honor and vanilla war ban except for in this mod. We got large bag of spice. Some really nice stuff actually from this village. We also got 16 cattle that we're going to drag with us and we can sell them to the guild master. Since our reputation is low from doing dishonorable acts like raiding villages some lords I think are not going to like that so they won't eventually join us. For 16 cattle we also get 4k on top of that so that was actually probably enough for the chest piece. Okay, well it wasn't quite, but if we sell the large bag of spice and the regular bag of spice, it's actually not going to be enough because we can pick up Ugluk Snaggletooth, who does disagree with the companion that we want later, but since we've disabled NPC complaints, I don't think it's going to matter. Oh, and we got Joseph Bugman here at the other Lizardman town. The main thing that's good about this guy is he has seven engineer, so it makes it really easy to siege castles, and he has six trade as well. And I think before our trade was four, that increased trade is going to allow us to buy this now. Well, okay, we actually need like 500 more. I don't want to sell any of this stuff. We we can just go raid a caravan. Since all the undead lords are over at Chupadol though, we're gonna head into, I don't really know where. Let's check Talanxla and let's see if there's, oh, there's no garrison here really. We can take this. There's also no fire belchers here too, which is really nice. There's some decent gunmen. I'm not sure how we play this. There we go, we got buffs, that's good. Infantry just charged and I think we got two buffs. Okay, infantry charge. So we have one unit that I really don't want to lose, which is this Chaos Dwarf Inferno. And it's like the Dwarf Master Engineer, I think. It does AoE damage. It's one of the newer units because it's the Chaos Dwarf. It's like their version of the uh, Master Engineer. I think it just got a shot off, but let's actually move our casters away from it. So I think it can do friendly fire if it hits them. I don't want the Croxagore to die, the ancient Croxagore. This thing is so beefy in dungeons. And it's a special unit that only I think the King of the Lizardmen can have. And yeah, for that reason, I think we want to keep it back. So he's parrying everything. Uh, that was a good unit. We got 600 XP for that. Their accuracy is lowered because of a bu uh, debuff that somebody casted. Got a level up, nice. Let's get another point of strength. We can get up to 15 Iron Flesh and Power Strike, but after that we're gonna stop mashing points in the strength and we're gonna go for something else. Yeah, they have a really defensible layout. Like, look at all their gunmen up here, and I'm seeing, yeah, they have AoE. Yep, here he is. I wonder what this guy is. It's a Cannon Master, Cannoneer Master. So these guys have multiple things that do AoE, which is kind of crazy. They have their zombie lead belchers and the cannon masters. The undead invaded a lizardman town, took it over, and now it's a undead town because that's lizardmen, the big temple, and then we got a bunch of uh, dock pirate stuff. I don't know if it was pre-built, but I think it was, and if they actually designed this, that is 
epic. It is so defensible too. Like you could put a bunch of archers up here and just plug up that gate. And yeah, we got the skull and bones up there. I swear they must have pre-built this, right? The main thing is there's two units that we have that are pretty much irreplaceable, which are the ancient Croxagore and the Inferno. Also, we don't want to lose our casters and we did lose a caster. And yeah, as far as the units that we rescued, we should probably get way more than we lost. Like we got another Croxagore. Five scar veterans. There we go. Oh, we got two ancient Croxagores here. So the Lizardman King must have got taken out at some point and these units got captured and then they brought them back here. And we got an Amber Skink Priest, so we got a caster back. We got another one of these Mahoots, and I'm not sure what's so good about this thing. It looks the same as the Skink Warchief, but it has triple the wage cost. We can also plunder the town for 7200, which we're going to do. I refreshed the tavern a few times, and there's just these mercenary zombie pirates and deckhands. I don't think you can go all the way over there to like talk to those units or any of these guys over here. After taking the town, we'll go over to Scorplax and raid their village, and then we can sell those goods back at the town. We also jacked that caravan too. And also there was 35 cattle at that village. I've never seen that many cattle in this mod. The guildmaster will only buy them for 4k though. Didn't we just sell 16 cattle for like 4k? We slaughtered 5 of them and we're getting less, but maybe this guildmaster just is ripping us off for cattle. Let's bring them back to the Lizardman town maybe. Also one thing I should have been doing earlier is starting to build up a vassal like Volans who has seven leadership. To give more feasts, we have to go to our castle and look at this castle layout. We got these green flaming skulls. That is really cool. But yeah, if we talk to the minister, we can give over Volans more fiefs, and that's going to improve our relation with him. We're up to 53 relation with him now. And even if he loses those fiefs, which he's going to, we still keep that relation with him. When he already has 127 units. Usually, at least in other mods, it takes a while for them to start building up their troops, but he started with 127. With his units, we can start running through some undead territory. Like, this was taken by the Lizardmen not that long ago, and then the undead retook it, so that's why it's pretty small garrison. Volans actually has a lot of range units in his party. So we're just going to line them up over there. And they are actually gunning at those dudes up there on that tower. It depends on the layout. Like sometimes they won't acquire target, but it looks like they are this time. We can also give over Tlaxalan to Boland, and he'd really like that. But I think first we should defer it. I'm going to plunder it and keep all the spoils for myself. I think Boland's is not going to like that. Yeah, he only loses two relation though. If we manage the garrison, we can actually jack the better units from it. Which these all look pretty bad. First mates, I think are gunmen. Swashbucklers, I would guess are gunmen as well. And marksmen are definitely gunmen. The main thing we just wanted to do is come back to our castle and give over everything to Volans. And I thought he'd really like the fact that we gave him a castle, but he just gets 10 relation for castle and village. They took Tlingsla, but they left this castle completely undefended. There's only 26 units here. We could easily take that. We could defer it and take the garrison, but I think we're just going to give it over to Volans and that's going to really make him happy. And of course, he gets four cannoneer masters. I think those were the ones that do AoE. And I think the depth guards are pretty good too. We didn't get any of those for taking over a castle. So we made it back to the lizard towns. We have more than enough money for the blessed of the old one's body. The head's only 13.8k as well and we're only 3,000 away from that. As we're heading to the next Lizardman town, we got a random event where we're getting attacked, I guess, by some goblins. It only allows us to put 36 units on the field. Some of these guys are actually mounted. Quite a few of them are. Oh, that was a nice stabby stab. It was hard to aim to because he's moving so fast and I'm moving fast. We only lost one unit. And we got 200 gold, 7 morale. I remember we had the cattle still following us, and we get a way better price at Lizardman Town. 30 for 7.2k. That was going to be enough for the helmet, but there is an animal merchant at this tavern. I'm not sure which animal we should buy. Like, there's this beastly necro serpent, which isn't that fast. The jaguar seems like it's a better version of that. Less armor and HP, but on land battles, you're not really tanking for that long, I think. Or we could just go for a tanky beast like this troglodon. And actually, yeah, let's do that. It's got so much HP, 850 and 47 armor. And I think on certain battlefields, like if we're against a Master Engineer, for example, we can draw their cannon fire. Okay, well, in order to get the money we need from the helmet, we jack this dude's raid. And there was some exquisite ale here that I guess people have been drinking. I should have put this at the bottom of the inventory. That was not enough, but right outside the town, there's two caravans that we can extort. And that is enough for the blessed of the old one's head. And we are looking very beastly right now. So with our new gear, we're going to try a medium dungeon. And apparently, the longer the dungeon is, the better loot you get at the end. And the last episode, we finished off with a tier 4 dungeon. We have to increase that now to tier 5. And the three companions we're going to bring along are the Ancient Croxagore, the Paladin, because Gotrek's actually not full HP, he's only at 65%. And then we're going to try to bring along a support. I'm just going to tank for the Croxagore, I think. Priest needs to not die, by the way. I think it's fighting. It actually got killed already. Well, I mean, we can keep going, but we already lost a unit. 
We have like five more rooms to do, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's any point. There's a pretty nice orc chest piece that we're probably just gonna sell. We don't have any orc companions, the rest lose trash. That was that Blackfire dungeon. We're now just gonna leave and we'll head towards another one. And also we can check to see if our friend, the master engineer is around. So Burlock Damison has been taken prisoner by the Vampire Counts of Sylvania. The vampire lands are pretty ravaged though. Drakenhof belongs to the orcs now. This belongs to Kislev. This belongs to Kislev. They only have one town and two castles left. I think. Oh, knock watch. I got a random event that she got a new mount. So we picked her back up because she starts with really high agility and we can give her a really good mount. And she actually got a random event where she's gonna get a new mount. She's only level six and I've just mash points in agility. She's already up to 18 agility. She has seven riding now. Wait, I didn't even put that much points in her riding. I think that random event just got her up to seven riding because now she can ride the horn one. She can actually ride the troglodon as well. Let's give that to her and we'll give her whatever we can. She has like no strength, so she can't use most gear. Immediately after that, we got another random event we come across a crystal clear pond which has been blessed by winds of magic we want to submerge ourselves in the pond of course we walk in the pond submerge ourselves and we gain one point in the magic skill which i think is completely useless pretty sure we cannot cast anything karak kadrin has been besieged by the vampires so that's probably where he is there's a lot of lords here though so it's kind of oh yeah we found him master engineer burlock damison and what i'm hoping is going to happen is these guys take karak kadrin and then they stash him here and then we can do like a prisoner break it looks like they're dipping out they're going for me that's why you got to be quick on your toes oh my goodness 7.6 we're gonna get run down here Holy cow, they went for the Chaos Zealots. I'm not even seeing they still have their prisoners. I'm seeing like three Chaos Zealots, and then I'm seeing 18 Chaos Zealots, and then 15 Dwarves, but that's all I'm seeing here. I think their prisoners might have got away. So we did a dungeon earlier and it failed, but I'll show the loot we got. What's funny about this chest is I'm gonna go back a little bit to where I'm pretty sure the dialogue popped up, but then I thought it was just my companions that were kind of getting in my way. And yeah, we entered from, I think it was over there, Come over here and then go up the stairs and the chest is in the stairs. Really good gloves, probably the best gloves I've seen. Wow, that's a really good chest piece for, I guess the chaos. And we currently don't have a chaos companion, but there is one that we can get later. And the rest of this stuff is pretty average. This was by far the longest it took me to find the chest. I think you enter from that room or I actually don't remember. Maybe you enter from over there, but uh, yeah, you have to jump back here. And the chest over here. Looks like it was worth it though. These are the highest armor gloves I've seen so far and they're chaos dwarfs so we can give them over to Gotrek. This time the dungeon is short and we might just end the episode with this. I want to do a longer one but we need the renown and the stat bonuses so that we can start capturing castles and stuff. So uh, is there a dude there? No there's not. The skink priest needs to uh, pull back. Four plus ward save on the skink priest maybe? I'm trying to keep it back but it's uh this layout, people don't want to behave. I remember this one being glitchy. Gotrek's going in, what the heck? Gotrek, didn't want you to do that. He's beasting though. Gotrek got knocked out. These guys are beastly. I don't think we uh, try to go further. Let's just back out. Gotrek is still really injured, so we're bringing the Paladin, which might actually be better even, because it has 10 shield and really good equipment. We haven't given Gotrek that good of equipment yet. And I really want to try the Skink Priest. He will eventually cast something once he gets enough mana. Yeah, once you get too close, they just start... Oh, man. Oh. He shielded. Nice. Good cast. Oh. The shield is helping here. I would have taken a bunch of damage, I think. for it. I think my units have shield, too. Uh... Oops. Trying to get the Crocs over to follow me. There we go. I feel like I got a speed boost too. I feel fast. Ow. Oh, that's a lot of damage. That was from the caster, I think. Clobrum. Nice. And the chest is in a sneaky spot. It's at an angle. Decent chest piece we can sell probably. That's about it. Room number two in a medium length dungeon. Transformation of a Codon. Summon a giant bear. He did it in the last dungeon too, but uh, oh, I took no damage there. Nice. The bear and the paladin are in the same group. So I'll just have them follow me. Oh, we got the shield. Nice. Augmented speed and ward save. Alright, let's just fight. I'm bringing in the Croxigore too. I don't feel like we need it here. So I don't want it to get knocked out, but they're killed. Let's just do it anyways. Kill for the gods. 
Got a level up to 42 strength. Put another point in Iron Flesh. So I'm pretty convinced the chest spawned in the wall somewhere or something. I have absolutely no idea where it could be. There's just a bunch of corridors and I checked every one. Could not find a chest. Unless it's like in the ceiling maybe. But yeah, we're on number three, I think. This is a cast or two. Very nice. First kill. Pull back. Uh, just King Priest is not being the smartest. Oh, he didn't get taken out. Okay. I saw some red tags. I thought he was down. We're good though. Oh. Four damage. Eight damage. Oh. Beastly 2 under guy. Never mind. He was not that beastly. Whoa. Nope. Pull back. Oh, she just got cleaved. Just keep the Croxor back and then uh, have the Paladin kind of see. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of dudes. This is quite the uh, formidable force here. One of those guys is a beast. I think it might be this guy. Oh yeah, it's this guy. Yep, he's taking like no damage. Chosen of Nurgle. Okay, that guy is a beast. Could not find the chest yet again, and crap. I don't think the Ancient Croxagor is going to do too well on this loadout. Skink needs to be on the top here. Croxagor can also be up here, I guess. And the Paladin is going to have to... Can I not get by here? I can, okay. Oh. Oops. Wrong weapon out. Just me and the paladin. Just got a two minute. And this girl is the caster. Yeah, she was. It's gonna be hard to two man this because there's a lot of uh, projectile fire going on. Don't foresee us two manning it. We have nowhere really to hide, I think. Unless we pull back. Uh, not in a healing potion yet. Just think about using one. There we go. We're safe. Let's just charge, I think, while this is up. Do we heal yet is the question. Oh man, this is brutal. This is Assassin. Dude's beastly. Come on, Paladin. Stay up. We got the ward save going on. It's still blocking damage. Freaking cleaving these dudes. What the heck are you doing? Paladin is beastly. And it just healed itself. So yeah, I'd say the Paladin is probably the best unit to bring in these dungeons. Oh, okay. I don't know why they have that there where it blocks your movements. But uh, yeah, I'm not even going to look for the chest on this one. We're in dungeon number four or five. I kind of want to hold off on using a healing potion until we uh, take a little bit more damage. I'm only worried about spellcasters though. I'm not worried about... Oh, I see a necromancer. So we're in charge. Oh god, get the necromancer. Wait, he's in melee. This is good. I sent our skink priest to charge on accident. It's dead. Oh well. Summon some skeletons or did damage. Okay, this chest was pretty easy to find. Nothing too crazy good. Mesa does blunt damage and it does cutting damage with the same attack. A oh, strong, strong bow. It's the highest power draw bow I've seen. Yeah, this might be the last level. I feel like just using a healing potion. Uh, yeah, let's just use it. Lord Paladin's charging in. Oops. Did not realize that uh, it goes back that way. Plus, seeing a lady heals a paladin. I think it's only got one of those. Oh god. My bad, paladin. I'm not leading you to victory. I'm blocking you. It's down. Hopefully, this is the last level. 
Where's the Crocs I got at? Is it down? Oh, here we go. I don't know why they're backing off. It's perfect though. Oh, there's a chest. I should not try to chase that guy. Comes a Crocs I I think. Yep. That's with the chest. Trash. Uh, vendor trash. That was a short one though. And there we go. Exit dungeon. It's for the loot. What is a naphtha bomb? So this thing I'm guessing does like some AoE. We got a pull arm. It's not that good. Lordly Lord's Helm. So yeah, we're getting really good modifiers for the higher tier dungeons, I think. Thick Orc Blocka, another really good modifier because it's thick. Hardened Dwarf, yep. Yeah, we're getting good modifiers. A hardened helm. Just regular Empire Muskets. I don't think these can have modifiers. Another musket. That was a level five dungeon. So we're gonna be getting five attribute and skill points. And I'm thinking I want to go into power throw in the next episode because we have a really cool throwing weapon.